Melanie's Matters TV and Radio. We highlight artists, business owners, and we talk about the matters of the community. Melanie's Matters presents realist Kevin Nelson on the African American Hi, journey. Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Melanie's Matters. Guys, I'm excited, but you guys know I'm excited about every show. I say that all the time. But I'm, I'm really excited today because um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've really been into the history of African Americans lately, I guess about three weeks now. So I'm actually stalking people on Facebook and Twitter and just kind of looking at what they put. And I have to say, Mr. Kevin Nelson here has been so consistent, so consistent with um, his post. His post is very enlightening, um, some would say, but some probably would not say. But most of all, his posts are educational, and that is what this forum is about. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's, let's talk about you and history. Why do you think, for you, it is so important for you to put out the, the history of African Americans? Well, it's very important to do that because uh, our people are very lost. Mm -hmm. Our people are very <sighs> snow, they're very, um, they fall for the okie doke, they okay believe in everything we were taught in the school mm. which is the main thing and um, just learning your history will change your whole life mm. it will change your whole life I mean once you know your history the rest of your life will change dramatically okay so when mm. did you start becoming interested in history um, well we started when I was like seven years old my father Mm -hmm. uh, sat us down and made us watch Roots because he knew that that was something that we needed to see no matter how tough it was. Mm -hmm. And it was tough at seven years old to watch people get whipped yeah. get treated like yeah. that. But yeah. in his eyes, it was something that you had to see because mm -hmm. he didn't want us growing up, you know, thinking that he just wants us to know our history somewhat, so it started at seven years old. Okay, so at, at seven mm -hmm. years old, you were introduced to Roots. Mm -hmm. I think most of us were introduced right. to that, and that was very <laughs> scary to, to say the least. It was very mm -hmm. scary. But for you, it seemed like it didn't stop there. So why didn't it just stop after seeing Roots? It didn't stop because every day in life, you see um, just different things that make your mind say, wait a minute, you know, that's not right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when you're little, you're not allowed to speak on those things. Okay. You know, you're basically told what to think. You're told how to think. Mm -hmm. You're told what to believe in. Okay. okay. Like most of us are as black people. And mm -hmm. you can't really say, well, that doesn't really jive or it doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You just got to go with the flow and just... You know, but now as I got older, I'm grown, so I can. Yeah. You know. So, so what was it for you that thing or those things that made you say, "Wait a minute, this is not quite adding up. One one is not quite adding up." So, what was that thing? Because I think when most people start um, getting more knowledge or wanting more knowledge, it is a thing or some things that make them want to do that. So, what was it for you? For me, it was. Uh, I think. High school was a big uh, game changer for me because when we were in school, I was really bored with school. Okay. okay. Like I wasn't really interested in school. I'm like, you know, I went, I graduated, right. but I was like every time history was always something I was interested in. Mm. But when you're not seeing yourself, you see Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, the usual, same old usual, the usual. and yeah. you're thinking it's got to be more to it than that. So wow. I graduated. Wow. And I think it was 89, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory came up. Okay. okay. And Glory set off something in my mind to say, I didn't know the story. I didn't know black, for, you know, black people fought in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, to me, that kind of, you know, was like the linchpin that kind of started everything up. So wow. I think I was like 19. And then I read the autobiography of Malcolm X. Mm. I read Race Matters by Cornel West. Mm. 
that started it all. I mean, it didn't start, but it it really pushed me in that direction. Well, let me let me add to the to to your story. I know for me, um, history. I never wanted to. I was not interested. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. I don't want to know. It happened yesterday. I'm not there. I'm, I'm here today. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you what happened in my life. Seeds were placed in my own personal life. Um, my aunt, rest her soul. Every time we would go to her house, she would load me down. I had um, two two daughters, two younger kids at the time. She would load me down with books. Books. She said, anything that they want to hide from you, they put it in the book. <laughs> and that stuck with me. That stuck with me. But it didn't quite change me. That was a seed that she planted in me. So, you know, every time I'm like, oh, God, I got to go to Aunt G house. Oh, Lord, we already know. You know, right. but I was younger. I was 20 in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, all right, Aunt Judy, I got it. And so I said, okay, kids, y'all gonna read these books and, you know, things like that. But I'm going to tell you, when I went to uh, Dundalk, which is a part of CCBC, mm -hmm. I took a course, um, African American History, and I took English. I always wrote. That, that was my thing. So my issue was the history part of it. Mm -hmm. So when I took the class, and I had two white professors, they, um, we had to see Armistad. When I saw that, I said, oh my God. Wow, mm -hmm. you know, they talk about slave trade, they talked about us um, being uh, queen, kings and everything, stuff that we don't generally get to know, unless, especially in school, mm -hmm. especially in, you know, yeah. public school, like you said, Martin Luther King, <laughs> Rosa, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, so that was another seed that was planted. Mm -hmm. For me, when the riots happened here, I said, it has got to be a reason why we are just so, you know, just bewildered and all over the place. So that prompted me to kind of dig more into the history of African Americans. And what I found thus far is like, it's amazing. It's amazing. But we don't know because we, we are not taught this. No. We're not taught this. Not at all. So now I'm like a flower, you know, I'm just like, I want to know everything. I want to soak up everything. So it's like, a, it's amazing. It really, really is truly amazing. So I just wanted to give you my, my little history of why okay. I'm so okay. kind of caught on to this. I'm actually caught on to the history and the religion, which mm -hmm. is kind of like, you know, kind of intertwined, you know, mm -hmm. of course. So I'm very interested. I'm very interested. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we're going to take a very brief break and we want to continue this conversation when we come back. You're watching Melanie's Matters TV and radio show. A word from our sponsors. Become a state licensed and certified insurance agent. You'll be certified to market life, health, auto, and home. A three day course is just $99. Also offering online courses to get your investment license for free. Make the call today that could change your life. Call 410-365-4665. Carport Sedan Services. Wherever you need to go, we will get you there quickly and safely. Call 410-233-8800 or 410-233-8801, serving all of Baltimore and surrounding counties. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. So, so Kevin, yeah. history as you know it, give us a little bit, just a little bit, because I know you have a lot of information like I said I, I stalk him on, on Facebook every post he put I'm like oh I like that I like that I like that so give us a little bit of history from your perspective from my perspective um we came from Africa rich land the motherland uh, there were many African kingdoms mm -hmm. in Africa right. which we are not taught in school mm -hmm. kings and queens and just we have a rich history then we fast forward into the United States and we we just we didn't come from slaves. Mm -hmm. Slaves weren't taken from Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, you had 
doctors and mm -hmm. you know uh, engineers and yes. those sort of people yes. were taken. Slaves weren't taken from Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Great people were Great taken people from Africa were taken and made into slaves. Right. And so that's important. That's very important to right. say because people say, "Well, they took slaves from Africa. They didn't take they slaves from Africa. Africa. They took, you know, some of our best, brightest and yes. greatest people from Africa." Yes. So. And what I know about history is it'll repeat itself if you don't know it. Mm. You know, mm. and so sad to say, but our, a lot of our people mm -hmm. don't know it to the point where the behavior that they exude every day, mm. if they only knew where they came from, mm. I believe this. Sure, sure. If you sure. know that you come from royalty, and greatness, mm -hmm. I would like to think that your behavior would change. Mm -hmm. You know, especially towards uh, one another. Mm -hmm. You know, and instead of killing each other, putting each other down, calling each other names, you know, that sort of thing. So, right. but I love, I love black mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, the more I learn, the more I want to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I just, I love it. That's, that's my thing. I think it's important for us to understand that when we're talking about back in the 1400s, um, it's, it's very, it, it was a pivotal time. <clears throat> okay, so all cultures had some form of slavery just by the social status. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, in Europe, they had slaves, they had white slaves, you know, people don't, a lot of people don't know about that, yeah. but it was according to the, the status. So um, if you were lower class, a lot of times you were slaves, but not slaves like the African-Americans no. um, have gone through. No. Not at all. Mm -hmm. It was more or less you were a slave and you come work on this field and you might <coughs> go home or go in the barn or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, they did not torture those slaves. You know, even in Africa, they had a slave system too. Um, Africans were um, slaves, but again, it was a different type of slavery. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's very important for people to understand it. But at that time, we were so advanced, it was unreal. You know, agriculture, we were advanced to that. We even had a, a college, you know, yeah. they studied law. They studied um, surgery. They studied um, a few other um, subjects. So we were so advanced, yeah. you know. And it's amazing to me, like you said, the more that I find out, the more I'm like, oh, I got to keep reading. You gotta keep going. I got to keep reading. <laughs> I got to keep looking at these videos because I did not see this in school. I yeah. was only taught the bare minimum. Yes. The yeah. bare minimum. And I do think that they do that by design. It is. It's definitely by design mm -hmm. because you know your enemy never wants to teach you how, uh, the greatness about yourself because then your attitude would change and then your whole world would um, the people who oppress us mm -hmm. it's not in their best interest to teach you the best about yourself yeah. because then they wouldn't be in the position they're in because we would know better than to uh, fall for half the things we fall for mm -hmm. so your history is probably the most important thing that you'll ever learn. Math being the second because math is in everything right. that you do. Right. But history is first. Right. Right. And it'll mm -hmm. teach us, if we know where we come from, it'll definitely teach us where we're going. And I mm -hmm. think for us, we're just so disconnected with each generation. Yeah. We become more and more disconnected with the history. And that... Now that I understand how important history is, that's scary. It is. That's scary. I had a conversation with um, a family member. I was watching, um, I think it was Malcolm X. And of course, that's a part of history. Uh, of course, he's a part of history. Great part. And yeah, that, that movement was, was powerful. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came out of the family member's mouth was, what are you doing listening to that non-white stuff? And I said, what? Well, <laughs> and to try to explain this, mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to try. 
I'm just not going to try because number one, again, if we don't know where we come from and what we have added to our society, we are already lost. We are already lost. We are already lost. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of brainwashing. A, brain, a lot of brainwashing has happened and that is documented yeah. throughout history. You know, just, um, I, I was reading a passage from one of the generals that were on one of the slave ships. I was reading his passage and he gave a very clear um, description of what Africa looked like. It was full. He kept saying it was full of this, it was full of that. They had crops, they had this, they had that. And then he says, as far as the treatment of the slaves, that's when it all started. Mm -hmm. So he actually described how they literally got the, got them on the slaves and they separated them. So they separated the the men were down in in the deck of it. Mm -hmm. I believe it's called it. Like, no, the men were down at the bottom. The mm -hmm. women and boys were at the top. So that was a that was separation right there. Mm -hmm. But then he said we had to go to them every day to put fear in them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long the voyage was, you know, but I mean, imagine it was some extensive amount of time. Mm -hmm. And he said, so every day that we did that, you know, we we had we put fear in them, but we didn't have to do it as often as we had, you know, as we initially had to do it. Mm -hmm. So that is like a form of you know continuous brainwashing, which I found yes. totally like amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Yeah, and they do it in different ways now, mm -hmm. you know, they do it by television, radio, they mm -hmm. do it in, and uh, you have to think that in everything that you do mm -hmm. in your life, every day, in your everyday world, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you're being brainwashed, the, image, the images that you're seeing are being mm -hmm. whitewashed, and whether people know it or not, see, I was the same way. This is, this is an interesting point. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I used to watch the Dukes of Hazzard. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. My too. <laughs> and then one day, I, I was thinking about, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> it's a Confederate flag on this car. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this show, and what in the world was I doing? But wow. that was one of the instances that woke me up, and I said to myself, wait, you know? And then it's in commercials, movies. TV, radio, um, the images you see outside on the billboards, everything that you see is by design for black people, mm -hmm. especially in the hood. Mm -hmm. When you're in the hood, the, every image you see, you know, the Jordans, mm. <laughs> the 40 ounces, the food, mm -hmm. Everything you see is because you're oppressor and there's a lot of black people don't think you have one. I'm sorry to say you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, America, A-M-E-R-I-K-K-K-A, mm -hmm. as, I, I, as I refer to it mm -hmm. on most of my posts, as you probably <laughs> right. know. Right. And people say, oh, that's, that's so harsh. That's, that's where we live. Mm -hmm. You see, um, what they do to us now they don't straight up call you something to your face. It's done in different ways. Mm -hmm. And people, since they don't do that, people say, well, you know, it's all good. Mm -hmm. No, they're doing it in a different way now. Mm -hmm. They found a better way to do it. And when you uh, are so, uh, when you're so-called conscious, mm -hmm. you can see those things. And when you're unconscious, you don't, you don't say it. You'll say, Melanie will look at me and say, what's, what's the problem? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, don't you see that? I'll say, no, let's see what? Mm -hmm. And so that changed my whole world. Mm -hmm. I had a post on Facebook. I can't uh, recall it verbatim, but you change your mindset, you mm -hmm. change your language. Your, cha your language changes your thinking. Your thinking changes your heart. Mm -hmm. Your heart changes the way you see things, and that changes the whole world. Mm -hmm. And so that's it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. But you have to be, I, I believe my whole life I was ready for it because I told you at seven years old, mm -hmm. I started seeing inconsistency. Mm -hmm. You know, most people, they just go about their lives 
and they don't question. I mean, tell you when you black, you question everything. Mm -hmm. Question everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the re the thing, the reason people do things are for a reason. Mm -hmm. They want to keep you docile. They want to keep you in your place. And most of all, they don't want you thinking. Mm -hmm. When you get to thinking, that's it's a problem. It, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And when you get to thinking, mm -hmm. you know, Malcolm, you you. You said something about Malcolm. Malcolm is one of my favorite people in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that book. Why is that? Why is that? Because he said what it was. He said it straight. He didn't filter it. He didn't try to uh, water it down. Mm -hmm. He said exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And he scared people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now Martin, another one of my heroes, I love him to death just like I love Malcolm. Mm -hmm. They were going on the they wanted the same thing, but they took different, different paths. But at the end of Martin's life, he sounded just like Malcolm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Malcolm is one of my favorite people because he was just a fierce dude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to respect the man who says exactly what he's thinking, mm -hmm. and he doesn't change it. He called white people, <laughs> you know, he called them crackers. He, mm -hmm. he just called it what it was. At one time, he was the most dangerous man in America. Mm -hmm. And that was because yeah. if people started to listen to what he was saying, mm -hmm. that was bad for business, for a lot of people. And so they had to eliminate him. They had to eliminate Martin Luther King because his mind started to shift. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. No, I'm, not. I'm still Toward, in the mm -hmm. infant stage of this. Yes, towards mm -hmm. Martin's life, Martin, I'm calling him Martin like I know him, towards Dr. King's life, and toward Malcolm X, uh, towards the end of their lives, they started being, you would have thought they were brothers. And at, at one point, they were actually trying to form an alliance, which would have been really dangerous for America. Really? Those two on the same page, mm -hmm. with the people they, they're they, able the to power reach. Would, yeah. No, we, we got to put a stop to that. That can't happen. So where did you, you know? get that information from? I read and I study and I listen to a lot of uh, lectures, mm -hmm. uh, speeches, uh, greater men than myself. And I know I'm not great by any means. I'm mm -hmm. just, I don't need no half of the half, but I'm learning. Right. Right. And so uh, if you watch Selma, mm -hmm. there's a point in Selma where Martin Luther King is, is locked up. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X comes down to Selma. Mm -hmm. His people were scared of Malcolm mm -hmm. because their philosophies were different. They're sure. trying to do something. They think he's going to come down there and just right. rile yeah. everybody right. up. Yeah. And it's a point where uh, Coretta Scott King talks to Malcolm X privately. They have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, I'm not here to, right. to mess anything up. Right. 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 You know, and he goes in. They don't show this in the movie, but Malcolm X has a uh, speech mm -hmm. down there while Martin Luther King is in jail. And he actually essentially tells them, he said, whatever, Mal whatever Martin Luther King wants, you, you give it to him. Mm -hmm. I'm on his side. He never, he never said that in, you know, but, right, right. you know, he, and at another point, I'm watching TV and I actually find out that uh, Ruby D was Ozzie Davis's wife. Mm -hmm. Ozzy Davis, the actor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do the right thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And Ruby D was, they went to the um, marching with Washington. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out that Malcolm X was actually there. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was in a room with Ruby D. And he said, should anything go wrong, mm -hmm. I got your back. <laughs> wow. Now, well, I didn't know that. When I found out that, I, my respect for him just went. Yeah, because yeah. even though we differ, that's right. If anything cause. pops off, that's right. I'm gonna be right there, that's right. That's right. You know, because right. even though he didn't agree with my, um, Dr. King's the philosophy, philosophy, right? That's still a brother that you know. That's right. Who was trying to was trying to get things done. I may not agree with with the way you're trying to do it, mm -hmm. but ultimately we're trying to wake people up. Mm -hmm. And you know, Malcolm mm -hmm. was just a, he he was. He's one of a kind. I don't. They made him. They broke the mold. Mm. They they wow. broke the mold with that brother. I'm telling you, he was. 
Well, have you ever run this out? No, no, I'm, I'm still <laughs> I'm, I'm working my way up. <laughs> I got some years to catch up. <laughs> so I would recommend that you read his autobiography. I will. Because I will. it brings him from the time of him being raised under uh, his dad was a Garveyite, Marcus mm -hmm. Garvey. Mm -hmm. He followed Marcus Garvey. So Malcolm was born to do what he, he did. Wow. Because when he was little, his dad followed Marcus Garvey, another fish brother. Mm -hmm. And that's the way he was raised. Right. Okay. And then as he's raised, he's raised in white schools, but he's very smart. Mm -hmm. And white people, of course, uh, give him a hard way to go. He wants to be in law. His teacher tells him a nigga could never be a mm -hmm. lawyer and you know, be in law. That changed his whole philosophy. So, mm -hmm. But as he got older and he went through his trials and tribula uh, tribulations, mm -hmm. being a pimp and mm -hmm. you know, right. being a thief right. and all right. of that, and then he gets locked up and we know the story, right. but right. he was built to do what he did. And he was... When I speak to him, I just, I just uh, you know. You light up. I'll light up. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't hold a candle to that, bro. Wow. But I want to be just like him. Wow. And, and mm -hmm. Melvin, when I tell you that any brother who walks out that door every day, knowing that his life is on the line and he does it anyway, yes. I don't know how you couldn't respect him. Yeah. Because he knew. At one point, he said, I, well, you know, I, I live like a man who's dead already. Mm. But guess what? I'm going to keep doing it. It's a purpose. Most of us have self-preservation. I got kids. Right, I got a family. Right. I better stop all right, this. And right, right. Mm -hmm. No. No. Mm -hmm. People need to know this. I'm going to keep going. I know I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. He was only 39. Right. I'm 44. Right. <laughs> he was 39 and Martin was 39. When they died. And so, uh, mm -hmm. when I think of him... Marcus Garvey. There's so many great brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who everything I do, I try to uh, think of them looking down on me. I'm saying, am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. am, am I making you proud? That's powerful. And I'm not saying this because I'm in front of a cat. This is what right. I do. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> we know? see it on Facebook. Yeah. Am I doing it right? <laughs> yeah. Am I doing it hard enough? Should I go harder? Should right. I ease up? And I had a lot of people tell me you're going to you need to you need to pull back you need to pull in the reins you know you 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 hammering people over the head with your post and then I had people like you who asked me to come on this show and I and I know that what I'm doing right somebody's listening Somebody, absolutely. and so I'm not going to change mm -hmm. I didn't plan on changing anything right <laughs> <laughs> but, but now okay. I'm really not going to change and so you know I appreciate let me. Say that I really uh, appreciate you having me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. A little nervous. This, uh, no, you're doing fine. <laughs> you're doing fine because we want to educate people at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's it's not enough of outlets where people are being educated. We're being bombarded with entertainment stuff that don't make sense and stuff that ain't gonna get you wet. Yes. You know, so. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, for everything that I touch, it is about educating people. That is it. If you're not, um, I had this uh, conversation with my coworkers, and I said, uh, well, Huey Newton said, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That statement says a lot, because if you're not part of the solution, mm -hmm. you're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, most people say, I go to work every day, I'm not out there robbing people, I'm not out there stealing, I'm not out there doing dirt. I'm not part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But doing those things do not make you part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Unless you are in some way, shape, or form trying to help your brothers and sisters. In some way, shape, or form. You could be, you know, um, going to rallies, uh, writing doing shows like this. Mm -hmm. Facebook is a great thing because you can reach so many people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can organize much easier on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, if you're not doing something, if you're just living your everyday life and you live in the suburbs and you driving a nice car, living in a nice house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you done forgot all your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know, that's not me. Mm -hmm. When the, uh, 
uprising. I don't call it a riot. I, mm -hmm. White people riot. I call it uprising. Mm -hmm. And uh, when all those so-called thugs mm -hmm. were out there, mm -hmm. and by the way, we are not thugs. I'm not a thug. Mm -hmm. And these are those people mm -hmm. who were riding. Um, when all that was going down and we went to work, I don't know if you read the post that I put on there. Mm -hmm. I put the post on there and I said, uh, what, uh, for who I call Negro apologists. Mm -hmm. You know what a Negro apologist is? I'm sure you're going to tell us. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a Negro apologist is that black man or woman who goes to work, sits on the bus, wherever they are. And when white people get to talking about those animals and thugs who were out down there at the riots, mm -hmm. they agree with them. Mm -hmm. You sitting there talking to a white person telling them, yeah, those thugs and those animals down there tan CVS's up in, you know. You know why they went in the uh, CVS? Because there's drugs in the CVS. You know what kind of drugs? The kind of drugs that insurance is sky high that you got to pay for. First thing they went for. Not condoning their behavior. But those people are me. I don't create a division. I don't say those are, you know, those people and, and I'm me. Those are black people down there, I'm black. Mm -hmm. They were in dire uh, circumstances, economic circumstances that people can't really realize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when black people try to make a division, Negro apologists go and apologize for everything those people just did. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're anti-white? I don't think I'm anti-white at all. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pro-black, and there's a definite a difference. difference. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no one who is going to help black people more than black people should be helping black people. Mm -hmm. The forces that, um, the powers that be, mm -hmm. they have no interest in uh, really helping us. I mean, we if, if we want to get anywhere, we should be helping ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I don't think I'm anti-white at all. I mean, you know, I have white uh, people that I talk to that I don't want to burn crosses on their lawn and I don't want to do all that stuff to them. I just want them to wake up and realize and see um, the situation that black people wear. And I'm glad you asked me that question because it's a lady that I work with, a white lady, and we were having a discussion about the riots. Mm -hmm. and. She said, well, you know, all those people down there change stuff up, yada, yada, yada. I said to her, I said, you don't really know those people's circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the word, I don't like the phrase, those people. people. You don't know those black people's circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I started to tell her, and I said, well, you know, you'll never understand uh, the life of a black man or a black woman. And she said, oh, that's bull. <laughs> and I'm a nice guy. But she was about to see the other side of me when she said that. So I, I closed the I closed the conversation down because I realized in that in that um, in that instance mm -hmm. she really did not. She not understand. Understand? Mm -hmm. She didn't. She didn't get it. And and it was like okay, um, I'm gonna stop right here. Mm -hmm. And before I say something that's not gonna be very nice, so. Um, I'm not anti-white. I'm, I'm just pro but I love my black people. Sorry. I love them. And if it's one thing that I want to leave this world, I want to have something to do with us getting better as a people. And um, I will consider that my my like my my legacy. Something that you know the Malcolms, Martins, Megas. It's too many to name. It's too many to name. I hate when I say the men, the Ella Bacon, the Shirley Chisholm's, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Those type of women. Um, I just want to have something to do with uh, uplifting our, our people. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything more important in this world than to uplift your people, that's, but that's just me. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that is, that's amazing. That is amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to hit a hot topic. Just stick around. You're watching Melanie's Matters TV and radio show. A word from our sponsors. So, you need a vehicle. Well, come on, baby, and ride with the king. Visit King Motors. 
They're located at 5905 Liberty Road. And you can also check out their inventory by visiting www.king-motors.com. Give Justin a call. He'll help you out. His phone number is 410-277-4545. Jesus never fails enterprises. Visit www.jnfenterprises.com to learn more. Uh, you had a long day at work. Now it's time to chill out and relax. But don't forget to grab your bottle of Spirits or More, alcoholic beverage. Order your bottle by calling 443 7906303 A typical journey 10 true stories women will relate and men will understand A typical journey is now available on amazon.com or melaniesworks.com If you like karaoke, you'll love Costume Karaoke. Come out with Lawn Jack events and have a great time every third and fourth Thursday of every month. Lawn Jack offers drink specials and admission is only $5. Come on out and have a great time located at 1724 Woodlawn Drive in the Pages Restaurant. You need more information, you can also visit the website at www.longjackevents.com. Better Detroit Youth Movement and Better Baltimore Youth Movement. Visit www.betterdetroityouth.org. Do you want a vehicle that is exclusively for you? Call Cedric Lee at Exclusive Motor Cars. His number is 410-367-5327 or 443-630-7172. They're located at 4660 Reisterstown Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215 and you can check out their inventory by visiting www.exclusivemotorcarsmd.com and if you have credit problems Cedric will help you with that as well ladies and gentlemen we are back and of course we've learned a lot and we got one more to go okay so we're going to talk about religion so Kevin, I'm explaining my viewpoint after we get Kevin's. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you think about religion as we know it today? As we know it today, well, let me let me say, Melanie, that I was raised in the church. Okay. okay. My father is a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't know anything else. We yeah. on Sundays we attended church, mm -hmm. and. Uh, just like school, my whole life, when I was young, Sunday school, church, never felt right to me. Okay. Never <laughs> felt right. Looking up on a, uh, in a black church saying a white Jesus, never <laughs> felt right. Okay. Couldn't say that. Of course. Would have got backhanded. Mm -hmm. Would have been called crazy, all kinds of things. Would have been know? set out. Would have been set out. <laughs> <laughs> Got sent away probably, you know? <laughs> but never felt right. Mm -hmm. Never felt right. Never um, just didn't make sense to me. What didn't make sense? Well, the, the thing that didn't make sense the most was having white Jesus on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that just does not make sense. 
Something about that just, it, it doesn't sit right with me. So, I'm going to have family members who watch this now. <laughs> They'll probably think I'm crazy, whatever, but hey, I'm 44, who cares? Um, so, we, we fast forward. And, you know, you hear scriptures, you hear, uh, you go to church. And as soon as I was old enough, I started kind of pulling away a little bit. Because I, when I was growing up, I saw how uh, the inner workings of the church. Please expound on, on that. Inner workings, usher boards, preachers, um, you just came to find out that the church was just as worldly as the outside world. Okay. That's what I saw when I was young. Okay. It was just as worldly, if people didn't hear me, as the outside world. Now, we know mm -hmm. the church was supposed to be different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I saw nothing but worldliness in the church where I went. And I was there every Sunday. My buddy was playing football. I was in church. Mm -hmm. So, fast forward to the day. You asked me, what do I feel like about religion today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have since changed my mind about being a uh, Christian. Okay. Because now, remember I told you about roots. Mm -hmm. And I watched Kunta Kente get turned into Toby. Mm -hmm. And you realize that they took everything from you. They took your name. They took mm -hmm. your religion, they took your culture, and let me let me rewind. They took your name, they took your culture, but they left you with a good religion. <laughs> they struck you everything else, but they said, you know what? We're going to give you this good religion, you know? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> it definitely makes no sense to me, and it shouldn't make sense to anyone, but people don't question that. They question it, they won't say it. Mm -hmm. I say it. They didn't leave you with a good religion mm -hmm. because that's not your religion. Mm -hmm. That's not your name. Melanie is not the name. Kevin yes. and mine. Mm -hmm. And they certainly, they took everything from you. And I want anybody who watching this broadcast that let's stop and think. Take one minute to think about this. Mm -hmm. They took your name, your culture, and they left you with a good religion. Mm -hmm. So what they would do the white man would take the Bible uh, and he would get a black minister to stand in front of you and deliver the message that he wanted you to tell the other slaves mm -hmm. because it was coming from a black man. Right. The same thing they do now. Mm -hmm. And so it will offend people. But God, by the way, I believe in God. Yeah, but like, as you know, uh, God is... It's unknown, you know. I believe there's a higher power, yes. Yes. but the Bible itself, no. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it, if you stop and think, and you use your common sense, and people don't like that. Mm -hmm. That question, when you question something, because most people, religion, it, their whole life is built on religion. You take that away, their world is gonna come from right. that. <laughs> And they don't want their world like that. Right. Right. And a lot of people don't want to think about that because they were raised to believe something. But we're grown now. <laughs> we don't have to keep doing what we were raised to do. Mm -hmm. My parents raised me the right way, but my parents weren't always right. Mm -hmm. I realized that. Wow. And my parents were raised by their parents. Who were raised by their parents, who were raised by their parents. And that same mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. religious belief came from the family dating all the way back to slavery. That's right. You have to realize, I'll put it short and sweet. The Bible, religion, I find that when you, uh, Malcolm X said it uh, best, I think he said, you know, we can sit down, let's take religion out of it. Because mm -hmm. religion just screws everything, everything up. up. Religion just screws. Because there's so many religions in the world, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. yeah. I remember asking my mom one day, I said, I was little. I said, not little, but I was maybe um, 14, 15. 
That's my mom said, what makes our religion right and everybody else is wrong? Wow. You should have seen the look on her face. I love my mother, by the way. <laughs> but I asked her that question. That's a terrible question to ask. Hell oh, yeah. And she, I don't even remember the answer she gave me, but I just thought, what makes Al's right and everybody else is wrong? And so, religion with black people, wow. I can say this, there's a church on every corner in the hood. And there's also a liquor store everywhere. And nine times out of ten, the liquor store will be ten feet away from the church. <laughs> Religion, I hate to break it to people, but we're smart enough to know that this, what we were raised to believe, mm -hmm. is not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Let me let me add <laughs> let me add to this. I think um, you alluded to it. <clears throat> And I know when I started making my disconnect from the church, it's been maybe like maybe five, six years now. And I felt literally like a tug of war because I was raised to go to church. Like you said, you know, every Sunday you were in church. Every Sunday. Um, you know, that's what you know. That's the foundation of most families, especially African-American families. Mm -hmm. And when I started to depart from it for a lot of different reasons, I was just, it was like, ugh. I mean, literally, I felt like I was being, you know, pulled. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is this about? Because I've always had an issue with church. It wasn't the, the whiteness of uh, God or of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was the money factor. It's All that too, yeah. I can <laughs> remember being six, seven years old. And I remember, you know, you're a kid. You know, you ain't really paying attention. But what I paid attention to was that plate going around going around and didn't really make any sense of it you know I was, I was a kid and i said okay so as i got older and i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say it Go ahead and say. i went to uh, jamal bryant's church um can't remember the name something temple okay I went, empowerment. yeah empowerment temple. Mm -hmm. i went to his church and a girlfriend of mine she's like no you know you gotta come out you know he's a young pastor and he's a, i said oh well, okay you know i'm gonna try it because at that time i was you know on that disconnect so i said i gotta reconnect you know i went through this type of war for some time and so i went to his church and um i started going a couple sundays and i was like oh yeah you know this is, this is maybe it's where i should be mm -hmm. one sunday he said i want everybody to give in denominations of seven so i said okay so he said seven dollars 70, 700, 7,000. So that's what he said. And I said, oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. But this was the kicker for me. Okay. He said that I didn't agree with it because you don't know what I got in my purse. You don't know what I got to do. Okay. But the thing was when he said there are ATMs outside in the hallway, oh. I nearly fell out of my seat. Yes. And, you know, I I think I was in some kind of shock yeah. or something. Because mm -hmm. as I remember it, as I was taught, church and money just don't intertwine like that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. not like that. <laughs> and that was powerful for me. That was powerful enough for me, not just with his church, with any church, to say, I am not a part of it. Yes. You will not get my tithing because I tithe in other ways. You know, mm -hmm. tithing to me is giving, helping, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, monetary or whether it's giving time, giving yourself. That's mm -hmm. what tithing is, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I must say that just that one experience, had, it just left a very... Bad taste in your mouth, yeah. And right. I understand it. And let me co-sign on what you mm -hmm. just said. Mm -hmm. It was the white Jesus, but it was also the money aspect. And that's what I was talking about, the inner workings of the church, because you see everything that's going on. You know, grandmother on the usher board and uh, trustee board and all of those things. And um, you fast forward to 2000 and uh, the 2000s, mm -hmm. and you got Creflo down. 
asking for $65 million I, for a jet. <laughs> I was totally done. You got T.D. Yates, who was worth an ex in excess of, he's a multi-millionaire. You got Joe Olstein, who lives in a $10 million mansion. Yes. I can go on and on. I mean, but you know, the math adds up on yes. his own. Yes. Even though people don't really want to see it. Mm. So basically, you know, I work at 9 to 5, and you want me to come and tie and you pulling up in a Rolls Royce, a Bentley, a Beamer. You dressing better than most of the people I know. Your clothes are more expensive. I work a nine to five job. I'm giving 10% of my earnings to you. And what am I getting in return for that? Now exactly. I have to say that a lot of churches do give to the community, but okay, okay that's a big disconnect from like you said, the Rolls Royces and tailored mm -hmm. clothes, that's a big gap. Yes. That's a huge gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we see it done every day. Yeah. I could point out pastors' names, I'm not going to go that far. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, <laughs> but we can leave that alone. Mm -hmm. But I know what my eyes see. Mm -hmm. I know what my brain, my brain works. Mm -hmm. That's That shouldn't happen. A pastor shouldn't be dressing by mm -hmm. living in a $10 million mansion mm -hmm. while the people who are giving you the money to get you that $10 million mansion are struggling. Let me add to that. Let me add to that, please. I've, I've got to, I've, I've referred to this story over and over and over again. Now, number one, if we mm -hmm. believe in the Bible, Jesus did not, it, he was the same as the people as if we believe um, in the Bible, okay? That's number one. But number two, I always refer to um, to this story. I used to work for the, the Federal Reserve Bank in um, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And it was a lady. She went to church probably every day of the week. All right. This particular time, she was sick. I think she had to get an operation or something like that. And so when she came back to work, she was so, like, disconjointed. And I'm like, well, what's wrong? She's like, I don't think I'm going to have um, enough money to tithe with. Said, what? Mm. And it blew me away. And I knew that she had other bills. I knew she had other financial, you know, um, mm -hmm. concerns. But you're worrying about giving that church here in Baltimore um, that money. And it, it didn't. The logic to me was so off to the left. Mm -hmm. You know, but we had been conditioned, or she had been conditioned, mm -hmm. that no matter what, 10%. 10%, no matter what, no matter if the lights get cut off, <laughs> no matter if the car payment is late, uh, no matter okay. if your kid's not eating, you better have that 10%. I have that 10%. Mm -hmm. My thing is, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll say this, people won't like it, but I think you, you know by now, I don't really, that don't really right. affect me too tough. Mm -hmm. Schools and churches indoctrinate you mm. yeah. at an early age. Yeah. Just because you believe something when you were seven years old doesn't mean you have to believe it at 41. Mm -hmm. Now your your family and your friends will look at you as maybe you got two heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the opinion that you are speaking of might not be the, the most popular opinion mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who feel that way, but they won't say it. Like I said, if you take religion, and religion being the foundation, yeah. and you take that out from under, mm -hmm. the foundation, your whole house is going to come crumbling down. Mm -hmm. You have to believe the things that they tell you. And that's the way people think. But I grew up, and I started thinking, and I started saying, this doesn't make sense. Pastor driving a Benz and a Rolls Royce, the church, mm -hmm. living in a ten million dollar mansion, and I had these conversations all the time with people. When I, I just, well, you know, some of them are holy rollers, some of them, you know, they go to church every Sunday. Okay. My own father is a pastor. My parents go to church every every week. My uh, family goes to church every week. Mm -hmm. Hope I'm not shaming them by saying this. If I am, mm -hmm. they'll get over it. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, <laughs> 
church is I, I, I think the best way I can put it is I read an article that said that um, over the course of uh, what is it how many years the church has taken in 500 mm. in excess of 500 uh, <clears throat> I believe it's billion now 500 million now and where is it going? Because these <laughs> churches in the, in the ghettos, in mm -hmm. the hoods, like you said, there's one church on every street corner just about, but the mm -hmm. community within still is lacking. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. That's a And if you start to ask questions, see, people don't, people don't want to ask questions because you never heard the saying, don't ask a question that you don't want to hear the answer to. Mm -hmm. Hello. If I stay away from asking the question, right. Right. then I'm good. Right. Right. But if I ask that question, I'm not going to want to hear the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, my whole world is going to be torn apart. Mm -hmm. Because my grandma and my mother and my father went to church. And that's all I knew. But guess what? That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all I was raised right. my whole life. Right. Right. But I'm sitting here telling you, it's not right. Mm -hmm. And... Just because I'm saying it don't mean you're going to stop going to church every Sunday. What's the day? Mm -hmm. So tomorrow you'll be, so you know, you'll be in church. Mm -hmm. But just think about it when you walk up in the church and you see an ATM sitting there. Had the same experience. Went to a church and walked in and the first thing I saw was an ATM looking at me. Mm -hmm. I started to turn right around and go right mm -hmm. back out. But I think I was invited to it and so that's why I rolled with it. Mm -hmm. Turned my stomach. Those two don't go together. Mm -hmm. A ATM and a ATM. church don't go together. Yeah. And, you know, religion is just something that black people, when they're ready to have that real conversation, mm -hmm. that hard, <laughs> that hard that conversation, that conversation you do not want to have mm -hmm. because you'll get beat upside your head, you'll get ridiculed, you'll get talked about, you'll get uh, shunned. Everything I do, honey, I'm sure I've lost a few friends along the way. Sure. People look at me like I'm crazy. Sure. But do me a favor. Ask me, you know, do I look like I can? Not at all. Because I because the role models I have, they couldn't worry about that stuff. They had mm. to press on. Mm. They had to press on. So I lose a friend. So I lose somebody who was sure. If I lose them, I guess they wasn't much of a friend anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But um I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to have the hard conversations. Matter of fact, I would love to come back on here again because I would love to have the hard conversations mm -hmm. that black people don't want to have. Mm -hmm. Religion being the biggest one. We're going to make that happen. Let's um, make that happen because I got to come I have a, a couple of uh, <laughs> friends and we're, we're going to make that who asked me actually the same thing. Um, to have them on because they want to talk about religion mm -hmm. and hard conversations. Mm -hmm. I think that's just going to be the name of the topic, the hard conversations that African Americans don't want to have. So we're going to, have, we're going to make that happen maybe sometime in June. Let's July. do it. Let's do it. I'll clear my schedule to have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clear my schedule to have that conversation because when you're trying to help um, your people, mm -hmm. which we are trying to do, right. There's certain conversations you're going to have to have to move oh. forward. Mm -hmm. Or else you're going to be staying still. You're going to be running on a treadmill, not going anywhere. You're mm -hmm. just going to be stuck where you are. But if you if you truly, truly, in your gut, mm -hmm. in your heart, want to move forward, you're going to have to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's like the birds and the bees. It's going to have to happen. Yeah. And you're not going to really like what you hear. And let me say... And I'm not going to mention any names, mm -hmm. but some of these pastors and some of these people of the cloth that they have in front of these cameras and on these TV shows. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones. They're, they're they, not mm -hmm. the ones. They are not authentic. They are not. I think they are businessmen and business women. They have perfected. <laughs> The art of being, the craft of being business people. And religion came second. Mm. 
And so, you know, when like I said, I close, I say, if you're ready to have that hard conversation, mm -hmm. my name is Kevin Nelson. <laughs> I'm not hard to find on Facebook. And I welcome, welcome you to friend me and we'll have that conversation. Uh, hey, y'all heard it. <laughs> I didn't have to, you know, put it out there and I was going to add some to you, but... You know, he said, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll say it in every show that I do. This is a forum for educating people. So this is no different. Sometimes in order for us to even move forward as a people, you have to go backwards and learn some stuff. Not what they put in front of you at school. Not what they teach you in um, church. You have to really go back to really dig and get this information. Because I, I tell you. Um, like I said, uh, Kevin refers to it as the uprising. I'll say the rise. <laughs> but either, either way, um, that really kind of like, you know, helped me to zone in on some things. Like these people are doing this because they are destitute. They are destitute. Why are they destitute? Then you have to look at the surroundings. Then you have to look at the economic statuses. You have to look at everything. One boy, um, and I'm getting off a little bit, but it all kind of ties in. One guy, he had to been in his early 20s, and I saw him on TV, and he said, I just want a job. I just want a job. I just want, you know, I just want to work. And I'm like, wow. So that means that the resources that he need is the, or needs is not there. So that's a problem. That's a problem. So we got to to fix anything, not patch it up. To fix anything, we got to go back and say, okay, we dropped the ball here. We picked it back up. We dropped it here. You know, we, we got to figure out something. So so that's where I, I am. And I know you all tired of hearing it, but <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> that's where I am, you know. And um, things don't happen by coincidence, you know. Yeah. And I've been on his page every time he puts something up. I'm like, well, that brother is on point. Check. I like that. I like that. And because I see that he's doing exactly what I'm doing, he's using um, a form to express himself, to enlighten people, to wake people up. So I thank you so much. No, I thank you. I know. I, I, I thank you for being consistent. You have been consistent. Every post I see is consistent. It is. If, if I saw it, I know other people saw it. I hope so. I hope you know, so. I know other people saw it. As a matter of fact, um, gosh, Kevin, there's another Kevin that I'm friends with. Uh, Kevin, he, and I grew up with him, and I can't think of his last name. Mm -hmm. Kevin, um, who went to Lake Clifton. Kevin, well, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I can't Kevin, you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> last night, I think. It's either I had a post up or you had a post up. One of one of us. Mm -hmm. And um he he looked at it. No, it, it was me. He looked at it. It was a video of Malcolm X. And okay. he looked at it. Mm -hmm. And he responded to me and he said, Melanie, I didn't know this. And I said, You didn't know that? Mm -hmm. And I, and at the time I was reading a book by um William Lauren Katz, who was a white guy. Okay. And the history that this man put on the table. I'm only on page 40 something, but I can't put it down. Can't put it down. It's he page, is huh? a true historian. Mm -hmm. And so I, I told Kevin um, about that book. Kevin, I thought I had your last name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But I'm point, I pointed him in the direction of look on YouTube to learn about your history. Read this book. If mm -hmm. you So the things that we're doing is waking people up it may not be all at one time mm -hmm. you know but a little seed here like my aunt did with me mm -hmm. you know like you you were you know seeded along the way too a little yeah. here a little here and people will start to wake up i really hope so and i yeah. will say um not a personal plug for myself but uh i read melanie's uh post and i read anyone who's interested in genuinely genuinely trying to change our situation as black people. Um, this is the 50th anniversary of Selma, yeah. uh, if you ever saw that movie. And it's also the 50th anniversary of the death of one of the greatest brothers that I never had the pleasure of meeting, but I wish I had Malcolm X. 
died in 1965, assassinated. You already know his story, but um, it's the 50th anniversary of his death. And uh, I just pledged to make 50 posts for 50 years to the Selma movement, to Malcolm X. And each one will not be ratchetness, it won't be coonery, it won't be buffonery, it won't have anything to do with reality shows. It won't, it's going to have to do with your history and just trying to get you to realize something that you might not know. Mm. We're coming up on Memorial Day and most people don't even know that Memorial Day was started by slaves. Mm -hmm. Black slaves mm -hmm. who they buried yes. in the Civil War. Yes. The slaves mm. dug them up. Dug them up. And made yeah, sure that they had a proper burial and that started Memorial <sighs> Day. So we don't just, it's not all about cookouts and yeah, you know, the, it's one of the few holidays that I actually celebrate that I feel good about. Mm -hmm. But that's for another one, if you had me on. Uh -oh. <laughs> you see the chocolate he's stomach, right? <laughs> you see that? You see, you yeah. see this, I, I mean, right? I believe that out there. It's one of the few that. holidays that I celebrate that I feel good about celebrating. Okay. Now, I, you know, you, I'll leave that to you. Okay. Your wow. imagination, or, you know, your, your your thought process. That's what I try to do on Facebook. I try to make people think. Mm -hmm. People don't like to think all the time. Well, we didn't have to think for a long time. Our thoughts were given to Our us. Our thoughts was given to us, but we grown now. Yeah. We grown, and we can think for ourselves. And there's nothing greater in this world than thinking for yourself and your, you know, building your knowledge mm -hmm. about your people. Because I didn't always know that Memorial Day was that. Yeah. I read about that. I said, oh my God, is that true? Mm -hmm. I always thought it was, you know, celebrating people who got killed in different wars and everything. And I said, well, we started that. Mm -hmm. But you'll find out that we started and did a lot of things that we won't get credit for. A lot of things. So, I definitely like, you know, I want to thank Melanie for having me on. Absolutely. And whenever she calls me and says, you know, Kev, we're going to have that show about that real conversation, okay. I'm coming back and I don't care what I got to do to catch it. Because I'm ready to have that real conversation because I'm ready to move forward. I, I joke, but you see the seriousness on my mm -hmm. face when I say I'm ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of the whitewashing. I'm tired of the racism. I'm tired of all of it. And it's up to you. Melanie doing her thing. I want to, you know, commend her for that. I try to do what I do, but there's no reason why everybody can't do something to change your situation. Mm -hmm. And just, I'll, you know, I'm going to leave you with, it's not them, it's us. Mm -hmm. And anybody who ever follow my post will always see me capitalize us. us. Yeah. Not I, not me, but us. Mm -hmm. The rise was about us. You see what I'm saying? That's the only way things change. When you look at it in a when you change your mindset and you change your language, mm -hmm. it's us. I think we make up 13% of the population, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. 13%, but we got 85% of the um, imprisoned mm -hmm. incarceration rate yeah. by design. And let me say one more thing mm -hmm. about the governor approving a $30 million jail, but can't. Uh, Put out eleven million dollars for schools. All by design. All by design. I mean, if you didn't really know this, once you read that, you had to say something's wrong. To. And had to say to you something is wrong with that. So literally, you are having your sons, mainly sons. Yes. You're having your sons. Young black males. You're ha they're they're going to school mm -hmm. halfway, getting through school, mm -hmm. and then they're being prepared to go to jail. Yes. They're being prepared. Like you make a dinner every night. They are preparing those young men for their, you know, their little trek to the, uh, yeah. they call it the school to prison pipeline. Yes. And so, yeah. And I'm very fortunate as a black man, I'm 44 years old, I've never been incarcerated in my life. Wow. And, uh, but it's, uh, I believe, a million and a half men locked up right now. Mm -hmm. And women also. So that, that's two and a half million people gone. Um, that should be, not all of them, you know, uh, uh, um, 
under good circumstances. There are some people who are locked up who deserve to be locked up, but there are a lot of people who are locked up who do not deserve to be yes. there for little BS charges. Yes. Thanks to Bill Clinton, that's another story. Yeah. And you know, if you do your homework, it's not doing your homework in school. This homework is fun. The homework I did in school wasn't fun because it didn't have anything to do with me. They were getting me ready too, but they lost me. I'm not going to be one of the people that they have uh, in these jails for 30 years. Like, his brother's getting out of jail every day, Melanie, that they're finding out was innocent. I know. After 30 years. How do you rep How do you, uh, how do you pay him back? How do you pay him back? Yeah. And how do you pay us back for what you've for done to us? Away. Oh, God. <laughs> mm. You know, reparations? Oh. That's fine. But how do you give me my name back? How do I find my great, 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 great grandfather? And by the way, you know, I've been doing um, Ancestry.com, but it only takes me so far. And I got to get behind a computer to find my people. And America did that to us. You know, we, we lost everything that we are, culture, names, things that just can't be given back. Generations. God, I mean, people, you know, it, it, it just, do your homework, please. Pick up a book, turn the TV off every now and then. Let me shout out, can I shout out a few people? Absolutely. Let me shout out um, Michael M. Hotep, Dr. Michael M. Hotep, mm -hmm. Dr. Umar Johnson, mm -hmm. Dr. Boyce Watkins. You know, these brothers, they where it's at. Mm. Claude Anderson, are you familiar with him? No. Oh, that's, that brother is deep. Mm -hmm. Not only is he giving you your history, but he's giving you the economics mm -hmm. to go with it. That's the, that's that's the missing piece. The missing that's piece. That's the missing piece. That's where black folks go wrong. Economics. We ain't talking Jordans. Mm -hmm. We ain't talking all of that. We're talking economics to raise your community and by the way, we don't live in a community is not what we live in mm -hmm. um, because we don't own anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you you killing each other over streets you don't own. Uh, yeah, you yes. killing yes. each other over streets of a that you don't that you own. own. Never understood that concept. <laughs> where did that come from? Do you know where did that come from? I mean, I know it's a street thing, but I mean. Well, gangs were created, you know why gangs were created. Mm -hmm. Gangs were created originally back in, the, I believe it was the early 30s, to keep the cops, the Klan, the Night Riders out to protect the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gangs were originated to protect right. the neighborhood. Right. Right. Black people. Right. Right. Somehow along the line with Stanley Tukey Smith, uh, Tukey, um, whatever his name is out there in L.A., mm -hmm. the Crips and the Bloods. Right. They flipped that on its ear, and now, you know, you have what you have today. But originally, it was set up to protect the neighborhood. There was an old song, I don't know if you're familiar with this one, it was Master Ace, but the hook was, I ought to be safe in a black neighborhood. This is where I should be able to run and be safe. But instead, I got to watch my back around my own people. Something's definitely wrong with that. We got cops killing people who look like me, people who look like you, okay. and every day. And um, they should be able to run to a house or, you know, what have you, and, and feel safe in their own neighborhoods. But they have, you know, us at each other's, other's throats by design. Cause as long as we fight with each other, we don't we don't realize what the real problem is. <laughs> and so, you know, let me just say, I'm not taking anybody's life. The last thing I want to do is to put my hands on another brother or sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just here to, you know, uplift them, teach them a little something they might not know. Cause I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to sit people think that, you know, have people think I know everything. I only know half of the half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait to learn the other hat. No, 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 no. <laughs> you see, so my thing is, you know, I I, I, I want, I believe it was 35 um, 
killing. Mm -hmm. was, it was it last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was last week. Yeah. Right after we was out there picking in for Freddie Gray, everybody was, you know, the, the, the Crips wasn't fighting the blood, the black the real family, all of this. We was all coming together. I thought maybe that might be the, the beginnings of something, but I knew the powers that be was going to try to throw a wrench in that because, like, you can't black folks get them all. That's, that's the last thing we, <laughs> we need. And now 35 more bodies dropped. And I don't know how people feel, but every time somebody says, you know, a body is gone, that's one less black person mm -hmm. on this earth. Mm -hmm. God, and we only make up 13% of mm -hmm. the population as the best. So I want to just use this show to say stop killing each other. Please, over territory and streets that are what? Oh, Not yours. Mm -hmm. And please stop giving your money to people who don't look like you. No, can I ask you a question? Sure. How is it that you let another man come in your neighborhood All day. and take your money, mm -hmm. leave and go back to wherever they live, mm -hmm. take the money that you gave them mm -hmm. and bring their people over here mm -hmm. to start another business to do what I just said, start the whole cycle yeah. all over again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's another, um, <laughs> you know, component that we definitely have to look at um, as a community. And I know for me, I just woke up. I'll say it, maybe it's, it's been a year or a little less than a year. Um, and I made a contract with myself. And I said, look, if I'm gonna spend my money, I'm gonna find somebody that looks like me. I'm not anti-white, but as Kevin said earlier, I'm more pro-black than anything. And I'm mm -hmm. conscious. Mm -hmm. I'm very conscious of where my, my money is spent. So if I'm going to help lift somebody up, it's going to be somebody that looks like me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we have to do a little bit more uh, research when it comes to like um, mm -hmm. buying stuff, you know, wh whatever your fancy is, you know, whatever you want to buy, because mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of black business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember a while ago, I wanted to get uh, a, a pedicure. So I'm online looking, you know, black uh salons you know they, they give my and i mean it was work it was work it was work so i am you know I, I want people to start connecting with people you know i i don't know how to do it mm -hmm. I, I swear i don't know how to do it but we gotta make some kind of i don't know something to let people know hey i'm in business and this is what i do mm -hmm. you know because for me personally i am making a conscious effort to spend my dollar with people who look like me you know, and somebody gave me the argument that, um, you know, like if a black person, I'm sorry, y'all, we went over, but, you know, it is what it is. But if a black person is in business, they're getting their supplies from somebody white, so you really are not supporting the black. I've heard that too. So I think we have to have a show on that too, that, that economic um, component. We, yes. we have to, we have to um, educate people. But I just want to say too, you know, support your own. Um, just please wake up in, in general. Just wake up. Again, I'm not anti-white. Kevin is not anti-white. Uh, but we, we, we got to look through these books to see where we come from. If you're not a book person, please go on YouTube. They have a lot of documentaries. A lot. I mean, I just started, you know, recently. But I'm blown away mm -hmm. because I understand where I come from. I'm getting the, the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I understand that the big picture that I'm now getting is not the picture that I was shown and given in school. And so I feel like I'm a student all over again, all learn, over again. learning this mm -hmm. stuff. But I, I really want to. I, I really want to because mm -hmm. we we gotta have those hard conversations. We, we gotta have those hard conversations about mm -hmm. religion. We yes. gotta have those hard conversations about money. We gotta have those hard conversations about where you come from. You know, yes. we just gotta have those conversations. So, I, yeah. Kevin, I'd like to thank you so much. Oh, thank you for thank for you. coming on and enlightening. I really do. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, until the next time, you guys take care and I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching Melanie's Matters TV and radio show. Be sure to also follow us on our radio talk show, which is blogtalkradio.com. Search Melanie's Matters. Thanks again and I'll talk to you soon.